Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a first look at Android 12L for the Surface Duo. Yes, it's finally here. After months of waiting, Microsoft has delivered its version of Android 12L and it's quite a big update. For the first time, Microsoft is introducing its own design language to Android. So many, many of the elements here you'll see match or are very similar to uh, the Windows 11 equivalent. So you can see here the quick actions panel here looks very similar to the quick settings panel on Windows 11. There's lots of blur effects, nice fluid animations, all of that good stuff. Uh, so yes, let's dive straight in and start walking through what's new with this release. Uh, and uh, let's start with the lock screen. As you can see, the lock screen here has been updated slightly. We have our date and time over here, which now has a slightly thicker font. Uh, and that's because it's trying to, they've tried to make it look a bit like the Windows 11 lock screen. And when you're using a single screen here, that is very apparent. You can see that, yeah, if you look at a lock screen on a Windows PC, looks very similar to this, which uh, is pretty cool. If we log in here, you'll see that there's a nice sort of animation that plays when you use your fingerprint. And if you don't use a fingerprint, if we swipe up from, from the bottom, for example, uh, you'll get uh, a nice sort of blurred background with a, an updated UI for the pin entry. So if we type our pin here, we can log in like that as well. And here we are on the uh, home screen. So you may have noticed as well, the new wallpaper. This is a new default wallpaper for Android 12L. In fact, there are a number of colors for it. So if we jump into settings here, go into wallpaper, go into here, you'll see that in addition to the defaults we had before, we now have uh, four new ones, all of which are a different colors. So we have blue, purple, red, and we have a green one. In fact, I like the red one. Let's set red, why the hell not? There we are. Brilliant, that looks fantastic. Uh, now the Microsoft launch has also been updated slightly to sort of match this new design language. You'll notice sort of drop down menus here, for example, now use um, similar toggles to that of Windows 11. And if we come over to the activity feed here, you'll also see that boxes here have a similar design to the Windows 11 notification panel as well. So that's pretty cool. There are also some new fluid animations that are present when you swipe between apps and the home screen. So if we open up an app here, for example, and then close it again, instead of just zooming out, it will now zoom back into the icon where it is on your home screen. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And that also works in single screen mode. So if we show you that there as well, uh, it looks pretty fancy and it's, it just makes the whole device feel more polished. It's a really nice change. And it's something that, you know, other phones have had for a long time. The iPhone does it, Samsung does it, Google does it. The Surface Duo wasn't doing it, and now it is, and it's pretty awesome. So I'm really happy to see that they finally, they're finally adding that sort of polish to the OS. So if we open up our notification shade here, you'll see that the UI has indeed been updated. Along the top here, we have four quick actions. And if we swipe down again, that gives us access to our full control panel here. So I can swipe between all the different quick actions that you can customize. If we tap on customize here, there's lots more to add as well. All of this is sort of the standard stuff that you would have had on Android 11. Uh, some of it may be new to Android 12L as well, but um, you, the editing sort of process is exactly the same. We can even reset that up there as well if we want which is pretty fancy. Uh, and if we jump into settings here, we can actually take a look at the new settings app, which has been updated as well. As you can see, we now have new icons along the side here, which match the Fluent Design icons on Windows 11. Uh, and it's all part of sort of making this release feel more like a Windows extension rather than being explicitly an Android device, which it still is. Uh, there's just hints of Windows in here now, which I think is really nice. So while we're in here, let's actually span this because it looks best when spanned. Uh, actually, let's also go in here and enable light themes so you can stop seeing my reflection. There we are. Uh, if we come down here, there is a new wallpaper and style area. So in addition to being able to choose your wallpaper, you can now also choose a color palette. So this is part of Android 12L. You can now choose accent colors for the Surface Duo, which appear in areas such as the notification shade, for example. So by default, it will be set to wallpaper theming. So it will take a look at your wallpaper and decide for you what the best accent color would be to complement your wallpaper. Uh, and you can customize that through here as well. And you can see the live updates there. But if you don't like those options, you can just go to accent colors here and there are a standard set of colors for you to choose from. Sadly, you only get four with Android 12L. I believe with Android 13, there are more colors, but since this is based on 12L, we're only getting the four here. But there you are, let's set that to default because I think white and red actually looks pretty fancy. And um, there we are, this is looking pretty good. So once again, I wanna show you what this UI looks like in light mode. I think it looks really nice. This is a very clean version of Android. I'm a big fan. Anyway, let's go back into settings here. If we go into um, connected devices, scroll down to Surface Pen, 
and then go down into pen menu, there is now a new option called pen menu and you can customize this menu however you like. It's essentially a quick launcher for pen related apps, although you can add any app you want even if it doesn't take pen input. But you can see up here, I can customize what this looks like. I can move these apps around if I want to. I can add new ones. So let's swap OneNote for say calculator. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but hey, there you are. And that works as you would expect. And if I connect a Surface Pen here, so give that a second to connect, there we go. So once that's connected, I can now press the top button and you'll see a new Surface uh, Pen menu appear and I can now launch those apps through here with ease, uh, which is pretty cool. And that works from anywhere. Uh, except the lock screen, I think. So I can press this button, the, the top button, whenever I want. In fact, you can even customize which button you press, I believe. So if we go back here, that's not where I was. Oops, there we go. Go into connected devices, go down to Surface Pen, go down to this area, the pen shortcuts area. And you can see here, we can actually set it to either be a single click, a double click or a press and hold. By default, it's set to single click, which makes the most sense. But if you don't like that, if you prefer having single click be straight to OneNote, you can set that. And then you, you can set double click to open the pen menu or press and hold, for example. Now at the bottom here, we also have this new area which shows you your pen uh, statistics, I guess. You have your serial number there, as well as whether or not you're up to date. So you'll be able to update you, your UI through um, your UI. You'll be able to update your pen through this UI now as well, which is pretty fancy. And before it would just do it in the background, but now there's an actual UI for users to be able to check, which is pretty cool. Now, another thing that's new with this update, which I can't really show you, is that there are a number of new sort of haptics and, and bumps that occur when doing things. So for example, if I swipe up and swipe between our open apps, I'm feeling a slight vibration as the apps swipe through, which is really nice. Same for lifting to wake. If I lift the device, uh, I'm feeling a slight haptic bump when the screens come on, which is really nice. And so yeah, there's just lots of small quality of life improvements that makes the device feel a lot nicer to use. And it really does make a difference. You know, that paired with all of the new fluid animations, again, if I'd like to show you that there, it's just awesome. It looks really cool. And even using it in single screen mode works really nicely as well now. Everything is just, just polished. It, it, it feels like a complete product now. And it feels like a Microsoft product because they finally added their own design language. And I'm really, really excited about it. So as you can see, that's also what a notification looks like. Um, when you have one in the notification shade. And if you have music playing, there's also a new music control up here, which looks pretty fancy as well. Uh, and that uh, allows you to scroll through it if you uh, expand the control panel completely, as well as play and pause and all of that other fancy stuff that you would expect from a music control interface. And of course, that UI is also on the lock screen. So that looks pretty fancy there as well. Uh, and that's always present. So if I open up in dual screen mode as well, that will be on the right here and your data time will be on the left, which is pretty awesome. Other small quality of life improvements are some of the things that were added in at stock Android 12L. For example, if we open up an app that uses say the camera or a microphone, you will get a, an indicator in the top here now, which uh, it's really hard to see, but there it is. Uh, sort of green indicator. I think it changes colors depending on what's being used, but that is to tell you that, hey, something is currently using either your microphone or your camera. And if you swipe down here, you'll see that there is now an indicator for it, which if you click on it, you will now be able to see which app is using what, which is pretty cool. Actually, on, on the subject of the camera while we're here, although there are no new features to my knowledge, uh, the camera version has been updated. And I'm assuming that means the sort of behind the scenes computational aspect of the camera has been improved. I've not had time to really check it, but the, the last app, uh, updates for Surface Duo improved the camera immensely. So I'm not expecting huge changes. There may be some minor improvements to low light, but um, the camera is in a good place now regardless uh, for photos. For video, it's still a little bit of a letdown, I think. Uh, but other than that, uh, that's the Android 12 hour release. It's a big update, new UI, new animations, new features, and it's all designed to make the Surface Duo feel more like a Microsoft product and an extension of Surface PCs. And I think it does a really good job. So there you are. Thank you so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.